Help us. Strengthen us. Envelope us. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Sing that song. 
Emmanuel. Let's hold the music. Glory to your name. Emmanuel, honor to your name. Give him glory, the one that sustains you. Emmanuel, the one that watches over you. Glory to your name. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Emmanuel, honor to your name. up our voices and say, Father, I thank you for the miracle of giving me life and sustaining me in this month of February. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and speak to him. In Jesus' name we pray. Proverbs, let's slow down, please. Proverbs 26, verse 27. Proverbs 26, verse 27. The Bible says that who, whoever digs a pit will fall into it. And he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. You are going to pray. We are going to say, Father, every power that digs a pit for me, they will fall into it now. In the name of Jesus. I will not be a victim of any accident. Go ahead and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Masoto Brakata Libro. Rekekete Libra Gata Libro. In Jesus' name we pray. Sir, Ma, you are not praying that prayer. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, any pit dug for me, in any way, urgently, let me swallow those people that dig the pit for me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now turn it around. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, any evil plan, any evil plot, any evil speaking against my life, against my destiny, against my family, against this ministry, let them cut fire now. In the name of Jesus, let them cut fire now. Fire! Le kata libro goto. In Jesus name we pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today I begin to harvest my success. I begin to harvest what belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, I will harvest everything that belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, I will take possession what belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and talk to God.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. Give us King James. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. Quickly. In Christ also we have obtained an inheritance. Being, you are being what? You are being predestined, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worked all things after the counsel. You are going to ask God, Father, let your will be done in my life. Nothing will hinder the will of God in my life. The will of God is that you will prosper. The will of God is that you will be in good health. The will of God is that you will take possession. It is the will of God that you will smile. I am being predestined according to the purpose of him. In Jesus' name we pray. Sir, hear me well. The will of God is for you to prosper and be in good health. But you know the devil will do everything. Not for the will of God to come to pass. But the Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence. Violence taketh it by force. If you don't pray, the devil is about going about seeking who he will devour. If he can, he can play coni coni in heaven. He can play coni coni everywhere. You are going to say, Father... In the name of Jesus, the enemy will not alter the will of God. Over my life, in the name of Jesus, the enemy will not alter the, the plan of God over my life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, Psalm 16, verse 5. Psalm 16, verse 5. Please, multimedia, you have to help me this morning. Psalm 16, verse 5. He said, Lord, you alone are my inheritance. He said, my cup of blessing. New Living Translation. New Living, New Living, New Living, New Living. Let's break it down. He said, God, God. No, that's not what I said. Psalm 16, verse 5. Hallelujah. He said, Lord, you alone are my inheritance. He said, my cup of blessing. Now, turn to somebody say, God is a cup of blessings for you. He has prepared blessings for me. So in the name of Jesus, you will not miss your cup of blessing. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss your cup of blessing. Right now, my sister, I join my faith with you. The Lord will release your cup of blessings. Blessings from the north, blessings from the south, blessings from the east, blessings from the west. In the name of Jesus. Your blessings will locate you. In the name of Jesus. Now, look, look at verse 6 of it, and then you will pray. Verse 6 of it. Quickly, multimedia. The next verse. He said, the line you have given me is what? He said, what a wonderful inheritance. Sir, man, God has given you great Britain. 
Great Britain will yield for you. Yeah. Oh, it's not for everybody. Maybe it's for one person. He has given me this land. This land will do what? It will yield for me. Hear me well. Bible says that anywhere your foot step into, he said you will possess it. Bible says that the, the, the wealth of the wicked, the Gentiles, I mean the wicked, will come to the Gentiles. Hear me well. God has prepared something for you in this land. You take it by force because it's there for you. If you don't take it, somebody else will take it. You understand? And it will pass you by. Your helper of destiny will stand beside you. And he will walk past you. But if you have taken it by force, he will be hearing your name in the dream. He will be hearing, he will be seeing your picture. When he sees you, he say, ah, I saw this man in my, my dream. That's the man God said that should help. Who is that person that is going to pray that prayer? They're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, give me this land. This great Britain, give it to me. In the name of Jesus, give me every good thing that is in this land. He said, the land you have given me is pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. My inheritance. In Jesus' name we pray. Sir, what is your inheritance? What is your inheritance from God? I ask that question. Because many people don't know their inheritance. Now, let me say to you, Jesus is your inheritance. Because in Jesus there's fullness of God in you. You are going to ask God, Father, let my inheritance be for Jesus. Because, see, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added unto you. See, if you run after money, you will be running after money. Money will not come to you. But if you run after God, I've shared it many times. When I was working, I had a business. Somebody called my, my office and said to me, um, Perfect Contact, we have a job, a pickup from Gatwick today. All my drivers were busy. I could do it myself. It was 400 pounds for a journey of just pick an executive, for a director of a company from Gatwick to Ito, 400 pounds. It was a Wednesday service. I chose to be in service on that day, or I chose to go and do that job. I could give, eh? It was unified. The church just started there. But I said to God, I said to that man, I said, sorry, we can't do it. I will give you another executive club, co um, cab office that will do it for you. I forgo 400. The offering for the church on that day, everything was like 30 pounds. It was a Wednesday service. But I forgo 400 pounds. Hear me well. Money is not everything. If you seek first the kingdom of God, and I know the door God opened for me after that incident, because God tested my faith and said, son, you mean you can do this? And I said, yes. If I put my hand on the plow, I'm not ready to look back. Lift up your voice and say, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help me, oh Lord, help me, help me. To be totally for Christ. Manleketele brokoto. Reke katakata librokoto. Manreka sakata librokoto. Menika sataka ibrokoto. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's be seated in the presence of the Most High. I can go on and on and on. Amen. The topic today is a new wave of glory. And our text will come from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, or 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And I will read from Passion Translation. 
We can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no one, with no veil, we all become like mirror, who bright reflects the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. May you move from a brighter glory to another. Higher glory. I said higher glory. And his glorious transfiguration comes from the law. Who is the spirit? Hallelujah. Now, spiritual ways deplete God's move. Therefore, a new wave of God's glory signifies God's supernatural appearances in the situation of a man's life. What am I saying? Most times, the ways of God's glory is a way of describing the presence and the power of God. When there is a move of a wave, there is a move of power. It can be manifested as physical healing. When there is a move of a wave, healing takes place. Deliverance takes place. I said to somebody, there is a move of the spirit here. Whatever pain you come here with, you will not go home the same way. Because there is a move of a wave. It is also manifested as a deliverance from oppression. When there is a move of the wave of the Spirit of God, there is deliverance. The Bible says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the children of Jacob shall possess their possession. So, sir, there is a move of a wave. Blowing now. In that move, there is deliverance. Whatever you have inherited from your father's side that is contrary to God's word, that inheritance is shattered now. Amen. When the move of God's glory comes upon a man, it can be, it can be overwhelming and life-changing. Many people describe feeling the presence of God as a move of a wave of the glory. Now, the fact about the, the new wave of God's glory is that when you encounter the move of wave, God's glory, it refreshes you. That's why when you come out of the presence of God, you feel refreshed. Have you ever come from church and you, you are coming out of the presence of God and you are frowning your face? Then that person has not come out of it. He refreshes you. Your reflection changes. Even if you feel heavy before, he lightens your, your mood. You say, ah, where are you coming from, Pastor Chan? Ah, I'm coming from the presence of my father. In the presence of my God, there's what? There's fullness of joy. You begin to radiate. So it's refreshing. Number two, it resharps. He resharpens your spiritual antenna. Because when you are in the presence of God, he sharpens your spiritual antenna to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. That's where in the church there, you see the gift of the Spirit. God began to speak to somebody in the church. And he began to prophesy. He sharpens your spirit man to hear what God is saying to the end time church. Number three, it revives us. It gives us, it revives us. Number four, it glorifies God. Because in the midst of the move of the way, you will worship God. You will join the 24 elders Worshipping him, ascending and descending from heaven. 
And number five, it settles issue. May all your cases be settled today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the instance in the Bible where a new wave of glory was felt is number one creation. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 31. There was a move of the wave of God's glory. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. So in Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The word came together, and the Father, and the Son, and said, Let's create the earth. And the earth, formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And God began to do creation. That was the move of the wave of the Spirit. Hear me well. In the move of the wave of the Spirit, God gives somebody a new organ. I have seen it before. Somebody here, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, God will give you total healing in your body. Yeah. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And he went on, he created the heavens and the earth. So number two, the burning bush. There was a move of the spirit. God needed to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of the Egyptians. So there was burning bush in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 10. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1. Moses was minding his own business. But God came in the move of the spirit. The bush was burning, but it did not consume. Hallelujah. When God comes down in his move, he comes down to do supernatural. He doesn't come down to do what man can think or imagine. Because the power that he carries, no man can contend with him. Am I talking to somebody? So, in verse 3, give me Exodus 3, 3. He says, this is amazing. Moses said to himself, why is it that the bush burning up? I must go and see. Because he wonder. He can see fire in the bush. But the bush is not burning. It's a mystery. But it's a move of God. When there is a move of God, he suspends the law. He suspends what is natural. And it becomes supernatural. Somebody say supernatural. Yeah. And the supernatural will bath the physical. Amen. Amen. Number three. The parting of the Red Sea. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 to 22. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21 to 22. He told Moses. Moses, the children of Israel were grumbling. He said, what do you have in your hand? He said, a rod. He said, put it. The Bible says there was a, a wind. He said, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind. The move of the Spirit. Somebody say the move of the Spirit. Somebody say the move of the Spirit. The move of God's glory. And the move of the God's glory, the Red Sea had to move back. Because the Red Sea cannot contend with God. Remember, the Red Sea is created by God. The Bible says everything is created in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That's why at the mention of the name of his son, Jesus, every knee must do what? Bow. Must bow. A strong east wind and turn it into what? A dry land. He turned a sea to express road. And the children of Israel begin to cruise and accelerate, and enjoy their cruise. Enjoy their cruise till they cross over. You will cross over. Amen. I said you will cross over. 
who is that person that will cross over? Because on the other side, there's goodness of joy for you. You will enter your promised land. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number four. The giving of ten commandments in Exodus chapter 19, verse 16 to 20. We saw the glory of God came down to Mount Sinai. That's the move of God. The Bible says, says, on the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed. Because God is a consuming fire. When there's a move of God, there's a trembling. You know, in, in, in Psalm 29, the Bible says the voice of the Lord thunder and break the cedar of Lebanon. That's the power of the, the move of God. The power behind the move of God. On Mount Sinai, God came down. He said there was a long and loud blast from the round on. And all the people tremble. You can imagine what happened when he was coming down to Mount Sinai to meet Moses. You know, sometimes I wonder, Moses is not an ordinary person, you know. Ah, to be able to stay where the glory of the Most High came down. Ah, he too has become a, another thing. Hallelujah. May we experience God's glory. May we experience it. That the Jew was talking about his encounter with God. That there was a trembling in the land. That if people remember that day, he was an encounter of one man. When the glory of God comes out, there is a shaking. The day he was anointed to become general of us here, the, the foundation of that hotel shook that that place was locked up for years. They've just opened it of recent. Because they said this building was built by a professional. How can the foundation shake? But the supernatural came into that hotel, and there was a shaking. I said there was a shaking. Concerning your case, the one that says you will not move forward, there is going to be a shaking today. Yeah. And in that shaking, there will be a transformation. Yeah. I said there is going to be a transformation. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? Number what? Number five. The transfiguration of Jesus in Matthew 28, from verse 1 to 8. There was a transfiguration. When Jesus went to seclude himself, and there was an appearance, and God came down. We know the story. Let's look at it quickly. Matthew 17, from verse 1 to 8. Early in the morning on the Sunday. The sixth day later, Jesus took Peter and two brothers, James and John, and led them up on the mountain to be alone. Yes? And as the men watched, Jesus appeared unto them transformed so that his face stood like a sun and his clothes become as white as light. And suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared and began to talk with Jesus. How many of you have ever thought about it? That God had to send the, the same to come and speak with his son. Something supernatural happened in that place. The physical and the spiritual coming into action because the son of God was about to lay his life that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly. If you go, you see, go and read it. And the Bible makes us to understand from that story that Jesus came over and touched there. Get up. In the midst of that transformation, they were sleeping. So it's not today that believers are sleeping. They've been sleeping. 
May you not be found sleeping. Amen. See, it's not about your title. So many people have title, but they are sleepy. They can't hear what the Spirit is saying. They have ears, but their ears are deaf. They have eyes, but they cannot see. Number six, the resurrection of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 to 10. I will run, I will run, because I only have time. Matthew 28, from verse 1 to 10. We know about the resurrection. We are all believers. If there was no resurrection, you will not be here. Because it's the power of the resurrection that made you to, to get saved. Hallelujah. Number seven, the ascension of Jesus. Acts Act of Apostles chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. The ascension of Jesus. Number eight, the day of Pentecost. Acts 2, 1 to 4. The day of Pentecost. Those are the day in the Bible of the move of the wave of God. God's glory was felt. The Pentecost day, the apostles that were timid, they were fearful, but when they encountered the wave of the power of God, they become bold. Peter, that denied Jesus, stood up and began to preach. He didn't care anymore. Why? That's why you need the power to preach the gospel. Many of us, we are too timid. We can't tell people about Jesus. Philip. Philip. When he saw Jesus, he was quick to go and tell Natalia that come and see you. The Messiah we are looking for is here. How many people have you told about Jesus? And you are asking for power. The power you receive, what have you done with it? Number nine, conversion of Saul. In Acts of Apostles chapter nine, verse one to nine. And then number 10, the vision of heaven, Revelation chapter four, verse one to 11. Now quickly, what happened to believers who experienced new wave of God's glory. What happens to them? Number one, what happens to them is that it increases supernatural strength. It gives you supernatural what? Strength. It gives you supernatural. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you encounter supernatural the wave of the spirit, you encounter supernatural power. You'll be able to do anything. They say it's not possible. They say it's a lie. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It does not really matter what they say. The economy of the world is not what you are spending. Sir, it's not. God will cause the world to bring money to you. If you know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The Gentiles will bring, I mean the, the wicked will bring to you what belongs to you. Number two, he deepens intimacy with God. Experiencing a new wave of God's glory can lead you to a deeper intimacy with God. In Psalm 63 verse 1, he said, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. He said, My soul thirsts for you. My flesh long for you in dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Your intimacy with God, you won't be looking for what a man can give to you, but you'll be looking for the water of the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of what? Of living water. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Number three. 
Remember, I'm talking about what happens to believers when they experience a new wave of God's glory. Number three is that joy and peace come into their life. Believers may demonstrate the sense of joy and peace even when they are going through challenges because they know that in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it says, No, may the God of hope fill you with what? Joy and peace. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of So, in the midst of what you are going through, my Redeemer, leave it. In the midst of what you are going through, you are not moved by what you see. If you begin to move by what you see, then you will not serve God. And I say it, you will not do what? You will not serve God. Many times God has tested our faith. I remember a day I was going and then somebody walked up to me and said, oh, I don't have money. And I wanted to walk past it. And the Holy Spirit said to him, that person really needs that money. And in my heart, I'm thinking, I only have 20 pounds in my pocket. God said, give it to him. He needs it. So I turned back. I chased him back. I said, come. I said, I didn't want to give you me. Me. I didn't want to give you. But something said I should give you. Because for me, as a person, color, uh, uh, that 20 pound cash budget. <laughs> and as soon as I gave him, I said, God, I give cheerfully. I'm more blessed in giving than in receiving. And God, and God is God. And the next day, somebody came to my office. Say, ah, Pastor, God said to me a few months ago that I need to come and bless you with something. But uh, I've been postponing it. But yesterday, I couldn't sleep and gave me an envelope, 500 pounds. I trade 20 pounds to get 500 pounds. If I had disobeyed, I would have missed it. Sir, so, see, when you know God, you'll be able to do what God is instructing you to do. We walk not by flesh, but by the Spirit. Believers, you know, believers of today, we walk by, by sight. We walk by flesh. We walk by one plus one is two. Sir, God does not walk by that. A few years ago when the church started. And God said I should leave my circular world. Leave my business. Leave everything. And I said to God, ah, you must be joking. He said, put me to test. And I obeyed. And one day, I told my wife, I said, I want to eat yam and egg. And my wife looked at me and said, where's the money? The money with me here, we are paying mortgage, you I said, don't worry, yam and egg is coming. And I begin to thank him for yam and egg. And Sister Ruth, somebody, Sister Ruth came, press our bell. I said, Pastor, I went to uh, uh, Brixton, uh, and I bought a uh, um, carton of yam, and I brought these two, two bars for you. Say, and on my way, I brought egg for you. Please don't be angry. <laughs> and mama looked at me like this. He said, you this boy, you be rich. I say yes. <laughs> Everything is by faith. Hear me well. She was begging me to take two, two bars of yam. Not knowing that that yam is a miracle for me.
Number three. Number four. Increase faith and boldness. Increase faith. Be touched by the new wave of glory. May establish increase in faith and boldness. We see that in Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 31. It says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together were shaking and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 4.31 Number 5 Healing and restoration I'm running but I'm running. Can you give me 5 minutes more so that I can round up 5 more minutes Healing and restoration Believers may experience physical and an emotional or spiritual healing and restoration James chapter 5 verse 15 James chapter 5 verse 15 Healing and restoration. And the prayers offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord will raise them up. And they, if they have sinned, they shall be forgiven. Sir, I saw that this scripture manifested a few years ago. My daughter had this medical problem. They said it is irreversible that the Jew was in Jesus' house. And I had the opportunity to take my daughter to him. And he stood up. I've shared it many times. And that was the end of the irreversible illness. He said, Father, thank you. If it is a sin, Father, forgive. And he placed his two hands on her and said, you are healed. And the man just sat down. Simple prayer. And he said, how are you, son? I said, fine, sir. And we left immediately. And instantly, there was a turnaround. And the symptoms, everything ceased. This is no story. This is life. So God, when there's a move, this is, is a carrier of a move of God's glory. This is a man that went to a cancer ward in Ireland. He went to pray for somebody. When he came out of the place, everybody in that ward were healed. Everybody. Everybody in that world. That the medical director now went to meet the person that came to me and said, who is that person that came to this world? Because every, every, every of our uh, machines is reading something else. After this one has come in, somebody say, carry of God's move. The wave of the spirit. May God empower us. Now, hear me. It's not for that the Jew only. It's for every one of us. Because I can share my own. But I share that because I know you know him. If I begin to share, it will be as if I am bragging or I am boasting. So I will use people's authority. Because I have seen all kinds also. But what am I saying? When there is a move of the wave of God's glory... There is a manifestation of God's power. And at this end time, you and I need it. In your business, you need it. At school, you need it. In your going out, you need it. Every day when people come in contact with you, you need what? You need it. Because it is that power that makes you different from an ordinary person. Every other person is an ordinary person that does not know Jesus. And you know so many people go to church, but they don't know this God. That will not be your portion. 
Number six, overflowing love and compassion. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. Number seven, I'm going to run. I have three minutes. Wisdom and discernment. Wisdom and discernment. In James chapter 1, verse 5. James chapter 1, verse 5. Say, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. Somebody say, I need wisdom. wisdom. Number eight, supernatural provision. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. The Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by what? By Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me jump. I'll, I'll do this and then we will pray. People who experience a new wave of God's glory in the Bible. Let's quickly look at it. I know we've talked about it in the course of the teaching. But number one is Moses at the burning bush. In Exodus chapter 3, from verse 1, Moses encountered the burning bush. He experienced a new wave of God as God revealed himself to Moses and commissioned him. So when there's a move of the spirit, there's a commissioning. Am I talking to somebody? There is a what? May God commission you to depopulate the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus. I talked about it earlier on. The transform, number two, the transfiguration of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, 17. Matthew 17, from verse 1 to 8. The manifestation of the glory when Jesus transfigured before them that brought the appearance of Moses and Elijah. Number three, the Pentecost in Acts 2. But I want to talk about number five, which is Elijah encounter on Mount Herb in 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 9 to 18. Elijah experienced a wave of glory as he stood at the, on the mount and encountered the presence of God in a mantle after experiencing discouragement and fear. He now experienced the, the wave, the mantle being transferred. I want us to know that today, God wants to give somebody a supernatural power. I said God wants to give somebody a supernatural power. I will close by saying, in Isaiah's vision for the Lord, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1, Isaiah profound an encounter with God's glory as he saw the Lord seated on the throne. Isaiah, he said, it was on the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. Your King Uzziah must die. I say your King Uzziah must die. Let's stand up. Your King Uzziah must die. What is your King Uzziah? That is your discourager. What is your King Uzziah? That thing that is not allowing you to fulfill your destiny. What is your king, Uzziah? That depression and that fear. Will I make it? How will I do it? You begin to think of plan B. God says, this is the way. You say, no, that's not the way. I have plan B. God does not work by plan B. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says he was seated in the loft throne, and the train of his robe filled with the temple. Verse 2. It's what I want you to pray. Verse 2, quickly. Isaiah 
Attending him was the mighty cherubim. Each have six wings. With two wings, they cover their face. And with two, they cover their feet. And with two, they flew. Verse 3. He said, they were calling out to each other, Holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's army. The whole earth is filled with his what? Somebody lift up your hands and receive God's glory. Say, I receive God's glory. I joined the heaven's army and say, Holy, holy, holy God. I receive God's glory. Receive it now. Say, I receive it now. God's glory. Everywhere I go, God's glory go with me. God's glory follow me. God's glory walk with me. Anything I touch, God's glory follow it. In the name of Jesus. Now stretch forth your hand because you are going to pray for any sick you seek from today. And they shall recover. Hear me. Hear me well. And this is prophetic. And this is not me now talking. God is saying it. Any sick person you touch from today, we receive healing now. Say, say, I receive God's glory. In the name of Jesus. I receive God's glory. And by this mantle, every sick I touch shall be healed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, you are going to be the first partaker of that healing. Place that hand on your head. And say, in the name of Jesus, as I place my hand on my head, I am healed from every infirmity, from every sickness, in the name of Jesus. I am healed. Lord, we give you praise. You alone are worthy, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 